All right, YouTube, for all those people that were inordinately concerned about Hillary Clinton and the spirit cooking, sacrificing to Moloch, drinking baby blood sort of stuff, oh, she'll win the election. She has, like, elite devil worshippers and Illuminati on her side. I told you so. That's not real occultism. That's why it has no effect. This was a performance art piece. But let me argue <laughs> devil's advocate here and say, oh, okay, yeah, Podesta's a devil worshipper. This was actual occultism. Did it work? The proof is in the pudding. I'm conducting rituals here. I understand memetics and propaganda. I've bind, I bind them together. I wrote a booklet on the subject, which I anticipate more people will take seriously at this point, considering there aren't that many other people that predicted a Trump win uh, with any degree of certainty, uh, certainly not since the primaries began. Uh, it's actually very, very funny <laughs> thinking about it all. Uh, it's a little bit surreal. Uh, because the occult doesn't set up certainty, the occult sets up uh, probability. Uh, this is something Nate Silver should take notes on, by the way. If you're watching, Nate, <clears throat> clear that fucking skin grease off your head and take notes, boy. Mm. Memetics, simply put, is the manipulation of information, either as perceived by humans or as will be perceived by humans. It's a way to manipulate in their logical faculties. Uh, it's similar to the Scott Adams approach, the, the fleshy robot, oh, we're all irrational, we only think we're rational, our brains just evolved to reproduce, essentially. A, a decent way of putting it, <clears throat> but perhaps, uh, perhaps understates the social element uh, and focuses solely on the individual. The social element evolves in the same way. Human systems that have been created follow the exact same path. Biology uh, is evolution. Evolution is king. The human mind is evolution. The way our genes perpetuate is, is evolution and action. The way cultures perpetuate and compete with one another. Religions. Language uh, evolves over time. This is well understood within anthropology. Uh, and if people like Nate Silver and Larry Sabato had somebody that understood anthropology working for them, they wouldn't have made the crappy-ass predictions that they made, which is why they failed. Um, Nate Silver goes into his numbers and says, oh, haha, -ha, based on four years ago, this is what will happen, and projects it the entire time. It was very, very funny. He was completely wrong. He'll try to save face. I'm sure he already is, but I'm not paying attention to his ass right now. I'll, uh, I'll fixate on stealing his job later uh, as chief prognosticator of uh, the United States or something like that. But right now, I'm just going to ignore him because he's become irrelevant. I've demoted him, by the way. I'll make a video specifically on that topic. I think you'll like my new term for his last name. Uh, but yeah, if Hillary Clinton has a bunch of uh, black-robed occultists trying to help her finagle people, they're failures, which is what I said. If you look, if you assume that like the spirit cooking stuff is the pinnacle of Clinton occultism, then there was a foregone conclusion that she was going to be behind and have a disadvantage, because that's straight out of like the Church of Satan sort of crap. It's a mock-up ritualism. The idea of, uh, I know uh, one of the Podesta leaks, uh, Clinton was talking about, oh, shall I sacrifice a chicken to Moloch and, oh, and do a rain dance or something like that? Well, yeah, that just shows she's, she's a secularist, honestly, because that's the sort of thing that somebody who discounts the occult would say. As far as propaganda is concerned, uh, and by, by the way, I'll point something out briefly, <clears throat> really quickly. People need to understand this because I talk about propaganda quite a bit, including the fact that I use it. Propaganda is not invariably negative. Sometimes it's used with a noble purpose. It's an attempt to forestall disaster or stop a tyrant or something like that. When we think of the term propaganda, we almost always think of like a Stalin statue where he's, you know, literally rectangular. We think of Pol Pot or something like that. We think of genocide. We think of millions of people dying. That's not always the case. There is propaganda that is at least an attempt to do good. Uh, the road to hell being paved with good intentions, I understand. But sometimes, so is the road to, to paradise, and that's the way that we're going in now. It's good that Clinton lost. I didn't understate the importance of the fact that she'd probably start an atomic war. I wasn't joking. That's the only main reason I voted for Trump. It became a lot less about his tax plan around the time she started autistically blaming Russia for absolutely everything under the sun. How the hell would she conduct diplomacy? We'd have at least four years 
where our relationship would fester and grow worse and worse, leading to potentially at least a Cuban Missile style standoff. I voted for Trump uh, because I don't really want to see you know everything in this country obliterated in nuclear fire. It's just not necessary. Yeah, Fallout Real Life, okay, it's entertaining, scaving the wastelands and so forth. Okay, that's great. Uh, I, I think you'd quickly find it's a little bit different from a video game, though. Unfortunately, you know, I want to hunt death claws too and go whack a ghoul in the back of the head with a sledgehammer, but that's probably not exactly what would end up happening. So I had to be a little bit more mature at the time and not vote for Clinton as a vote for nuclear war, essentially. But if she's got spiritual people around her, uh, they are gravely mistaken in their methodology and don't understand what they're doing. I'm sitting here, I've got people telling me, oh, Podesta's some grand high pooba of the occult, Clinton's like a witch queen or something like this, and you're just a YouTuber, you don't know what you're talking about. Look at my acumen. I'm getting up towards the point here where I've just, ed editing alone, I've released a hundred occult works almost. I've written numerous books on these subjects, booklets and full-length works. I've spoken about it frequently and very publicly, and I don't even reveal all of the good stuff to people that I happen to know about within the occult, for obvious reasons. But I'm willing to be more forthcoming with that stuff. A lot of people, they practice magic, they won't even talk about it because they're afraid of being persecuted. I don't care. I'm not going to lose my job because somebody knows that I'm a warlock or something like that because I'm self-employed. I don't have to worry about, about anything. I don't give a fuck. So people can know. It's like when I was a Satanist. I was one of the few people who was willing to admit it publicly. A lot of people keep it bottled up inside. I'll tell you this, there are a hell of a lot more magicians in this country than you think. You probably know at least one or two of them. They're just not telling you that they are because they're afraid that you'll judge them. Look upon them a little more kindly. Most of them are like fluff bunny occultists anyway and they just play around with crystals and stuff, and they think that makes them a witch or a wizard. Okay, it's a good start, but you got to delve a little bit deeper than that. That's what I imagine Jill Stein's memetics team would look like. A couple of old women with a, you know, a scrying bowl and a couple of quartz crystals humming to themselves and listening to psychedelic rock, stoned out of their mind. Gary Johnson's occult team is probably, uh... I don't know, some dude with a bunch of chicken bones in a bag or something like that. And apparently Hillary Clinton's people, they just, they invite Lady Gaga over and then they go swimming with a bunch of dubiously legal individuals in a pool while John Podesta beats off in the corner. Okay, <laughs> there's your cultism, okay. If you think that that's magic, I've got some sad things to tell you. Mm. Meanwhile, <clears throat> Trump managed to garner an organic movement that wasn't relying upon any policy trust me, uh, that he would have passed or supported, uh, that was conducting propaganda on his behalf. Another reason why he won the election is that the propaganda of CTR and the DNC and, and the shills for the Clinton campaign, the establishment shills, was utterly overwhelmed by millions of people telling him to shut the fuck up. There's your internet generation. That's a significant proportion of the voters, and they didn't want Clinton. The internet was ours almost from day one. And the Democrats almost cursed themselves because they referred to Trump as a Pied Piper candidate and actually propped him up through their control of the lamestream media during the primaries. They actually helped his rise, which he probably knew was going to happen. He probably took one look at the DNC's 2012 strategy manifestos, which he probably had access to, and said, oh, oh, yeah, I can make use of the media to gain the nomination as long as I can create a hardened fan base. Oh, this is going to be easy. He knew he was going to win the primaries. And once he won those, he already knows their other strategies. He took them for a ride the entire way. Uh, yeah, if Clinton has a bunch of wizards and witches on her team, uh, her former team, of course, she's uh, conceded, apparently, at least called and conceded, then they're fucking failures. They don't know what they're doing. It's like that Mexican warlock who predicted there wouldn't be a Trump presidency. I put more stock in the magical fish over in India that chose Trump. or the I think they had like a, a gibbon or something in Colombia or one of these countries, and it sort of... I don't understand. <clears throat> they have all these weird animal prognostications, too. By the way, the earthquake uh, data-based... Uh, prediction system was correct as well. That predicted a Trump presidency. Uh, but most of the mainstream pundits, the, the legacy media outlets, they all chose Clinton. They said, well, it's a foregone conclusion. I mean, Trump has to win all these states. He has to win this state and that state and that state. He's going to win half of those anyway. 
You just didn't pay attention to the polling. You were too busy fudging it around with CBS or something like that. Oh, it's hilarious. Uh, the level of butthurt right now is sheer. Uh, I think uh, you probably don't realize that. If you're like an insular Trump supporter and you don't pay attention to any of the, the MSNBCs or something, you probably aren't seeing as much of it. I am. I pay attention to both sides of the media. It's another reason I had my finger on the pulse of what turnout was possibly going to be. Because I could see at least the internet era voters, uh, which way they were leaning. It was heavily Trump. Be, I go to Hillary Clinton's Facebook page and all it is is a bunch of people talking about locking her up. That's a pretty good indicator of how the youth is going. Uh, it has become fashionable. It's become rebellious and fashionable among us, among the younger generation, to troll, to take out our anger on people near the top who we have access to because of social media. I can go on Hillary Clinton's Facebook page, tell her to fuck herself. There's nothing she can do about that. It's great. And so it happens. Through, through the, uh, the great wall of the internet protects us from uh, any problems having done so. The trolls have taken over. We now hold the White House. Uh, we now hold elements within the House and Senate. We hold the UK. It's all ours. The, the war of memetics has begun. When my grandchildren ask me about the meme war, I can tell them that I accidentally, the U.S. election or something along those lines, along with the other people participating, and it's going to be hilarious. This has real-world implications. It's no different from when people discounted television. I wrote about this. People at first thought it was nothing more than a novelty. Oh, oh how interesting is that? But it can't be used for information. It's just, I'm just watching the boxing game or something like that. <clears throat> And then, of course, it drove two entire generations. So people who discounted it were wrong. The Internet is rising now. It's not going to stop rising for a good generation. You've got at least another decade of total Internet dominance, of total social media dominance, before the paradigm shifts further. Um, and it might take a little longer than that, so we have to have quantum computing, potentially, for the next epoch in human communication. It will continue to be penultimate. People like me will grow in power. Uh, people, people at the pundits like Fox, MSNBC, they're going to lose power. Some of them will stop existing within a decade. Some of those networks won't even exist anymore. On the internet, though, we're gods. We're literal deities. And, you know, Satan willing, when the next epoch arrives, I'll be able to harness that one, too. That way I don't get outdated. It's very important if you're, uh, if you're interested in reaching people, you have to embrace new technology and you have to understand it. You can't let yourself fall behind, otherwise you end up uh, slowly uh, getting ground into the dirt by people who aren't left behind. So yeah, uh, Clinton is certainly no occult master, no witch queen or anything like that. Podesta, all right, assume he's a devil worshiper, it didn't seem to help. And where's your magical rigging that all of you complained about? <laughs> it never happened, uh, because the elite hasn't had to rig a general in a very long time. They are very, very bad at it. Next time around, maybe they'll be able to. Uh, as a contingency plan, they'll have something set up. But George Soros' magical voting machines, apparently they couldn't rig enough of them in time. Uh, it just didn't work. Well, there you go. I Again, I said that that would be the case. That's about all. Peace out.